Hello adventurers, so I hope you've had a Merry Christmas and I uh, hope you're going to have a good New Year, this being uh, New Year's Eve. So I'm just getting my icebox ready and I thought I would just go through what I do to get my icebox ready because preparation can be pivotal to getting good performance out of your icebox. Um, you can't just throw in your, your uh, food nice and take off and expect to get the best performance. We also might go through some uh, high school um, uh, science around ice and, and how it works and, uh, and what makes it cold. It's, uh, ice is cold, so your food's cold. It's a little bit more complicated than that. It's just interesting to know how that works. So I've got my ice box in here and a fridge. I do that because uh, my fr I've only got the one fridge and my fridge is not a dual zone. So I either pick um, fridge and I just have the fridge and that's all I have, or I pick it, pick it as the freezer and I take my ice box as my fridge. And I'm just gonna go through how I um, circulate ice through the box to keep it cold uh, for whatever the duration of the uh, trip is. So let's get the ice box out and we'll uh, take a look. I'm in the process of preparing it and getting it chilled down. So let's take a look at what I've got in there. <clears throat> so when it comes to the type of ice that you can use in your ice box, there's all different types. Um, in here I have roadhouse ice, which is uh, convenient. Um, it'll cool quickly, it just doesn't last so long. So this is great for a beer on a Sunday over and getting a quick chill, not so good for long-term uh, trips. Um, you get these type uh, packs. They come in various types. Some of them are flexible when, when frozen. Some have chemicals that allow them to stay uh, cooler for longer. Um, and some are just water in a bag for convenience. Um, the another thing you do, which I do a lot, is use um, bottles of water. A couple of advantages is they're available. Um, they're a neat package. You can drink them when they're thawed out if you need water, um, and you can get them anywhere. What I do with these is I usually have them across the bottom, and as they uh, melt into uh, full water, uh, I rotate them through the freezer, and then I have an endless supply, so I'll have three in here and three in the freezer. It takes up a little bit of room in the freezer, but it can perpetually keep this cold. And the other way is block ice, large blocks of ice. Uh, this one's melting a little bit. Um, very efficient uh, way of keeping cool. They last a long time. They're um, a big block of ice that can absorb a lot of energy, uh, a lot of heat energy, and uh, keep everything cold. So let's get on to um, a little bit about how ice does keep things cold because it's uh, not as simple as cold ice, cold food. Um, there is a uh, process that is happening when, uh, when the ice is cooling your food down. So let's get onto that and uh, I'll do my best to explain. So I just got the ice box in here and just checking the temperature with this infrared thermometer and it might beep a few times, that's what, that's what the sound will be. Um, we're at about, the closer we get to the ice, we're ranging from two up till about seven. The lid's about 13 and the ice is obviously zero. So let's talk about the, uh, how ice actually keeps your food cold. So matter has three states, a, uh, a solid, a liquid, and a gas. And as it transfers from one state to the other, it either releases or absorbs energy in the form of heat normally. So as your ice is in your freezer uh, getting cold, it's actually releasing heat. Uh, the fridge, uh, evaporator is um, uh, absorbing that heat, pumping it out to the condenser where it's released and that's why the condenser on your fridge is warm or your air conditioner. And so the, as the temperature gets down to zero, it'll stay at zero until the water has fully turned to ice. So the minute that it starts turning to ice, it'll hit zero and it'll stay there until it is fully solid. And then only after that does it continue to get colder. And that's an important thing, especially when you reverse it the other way. So as the ice is melting, it's actually absorbing heat. That's the beep from the temperature. It's absorbing heat from the environment as it's changing state from a solid, which is ice, to water. And as I said earlier, it's interesting that while that's happening, the, water, the ice will stay at zero degrees until it's entirely turned to a liquid. Then it can heat up. And if you go the next step, it's the same for when you turn the liquid into a gas. If you wet a towel and, and put it over your neck and the wind blows through it, it will cool down. As the liquid turns to a gas and absorbs that energy, 
that energy is getting taken away and that's the uh, cool towel you can feel when the wind blows through it. So at each one of these stages, energy is released or absorbed. So what's happening in your ice box is as your ice like this turns from a solid to a liquid, it will stay as exactly at zero degrees and it will absorb energy from its environment. And that's what's keeping your uh, food cold is that energy getting absorbed in the form of heat from anything close to it. And if I check that, that will be at zero degrees because it is got a block of ice in there and it hasn't yet fully melted. So until that fully melts, that would be at zero degrees. And that's what can keep in your ice box the temperature constant at as close to zero as it can for the entire time you have ice in there. So that's a very interesting uh, concept. It's more than just a cold bottle, therefore you know, keeping your food cold. There's a little bit of science behind uh, how it works. Don't know if that explains it, but uh, that's in its simplest form that I could think of uh, describing it. So uh, let's uh, let this get colder and then we'll uh, go get some ice and uh, we'll get it set up. So we've had the ice in here for a while and we'll just give him a check. Um, on the outside, it's uh, about 30 degrees there, about 25 or six there. So that's the outside of the, of the box and the temperature. So let's take a look at the inside. So the inside's getting down, we're at 2.7-ish. Ice is obviously at zero. So we're getting that internal temperature down about five there. So it'll uh, keep on coming down, it won't be long and we'll be able to uh, tip out this ice, the preparation ice, and stick in the trip ice and have the inside of this well and truly chilled so that trip ice doesn't spend uh, most of its time uh, just chilling inside of the uh, ice box. So I'll go and get my uh, trip ice ready and uh, what I'm taking, uh, what I'm gonna put in here and uh, we'll get on with it. So let's go and uh, get that ice. We've got our uh, trip ice now, it's in bottles. Um, we've just got to get the uh, preparation ice out of here. Might use those as well, so we'll stick those there. So I'll just go and get uh, rid of this preparation ice onto the lawn. So there we go, preparation ice is out. What I'm going to do is line the bottom of the uh, ice box, which is nice and cold with these uh, bottles of iced blocked water. And that will keep, that will keep the um, bottom of that nice and cold. I'll then stick the food in on top and might put these uh, packs on the top of that. So I'll go and grab some food and uh, we'll throw that in. Food I'm gonna stick in is just a selection of some sausages, cheese, just some of the bits and pieces I'm going to take, it's not all of it, but so we can just chuck those in, in there, just nicely uh, sort of proportioned around. And uh, then what we'll do is stick a couple of these on the top. And we can, uh, that should last quite a few days just like that. And if we check the temperature, we have temperatures down close to zero on the ice and a couple of degrees. Uh, where am I? 3.84. So as I close the lid on that, that temperature will come down and that will last for a few days uh, if you don't open it. Obviously if you open it, the more you open it, the more uh, of the cool air you let out. So the more the ice has to melt to absorb that heat. So you don't want to do that as, uh, any more than you need to. And then I can just rotate the bottles through the uh, freezer making sure that I've always got frozen stuff in here and this will be uh, pretty well as good as a fridge. So I hope that uh, explained just a little bit about ice boxes. I'm sure people already know about ice boxes, but just a little bit about how I do it. Maybe you did or didn't know the sort of the theory of ice, if that's of interest, hope it was. And uh, have a good new year and uh, see you in 2020 and let's hope there is a lot more trips for everyone to go out exploring and touring. So have a good one tonight and catch you in 2020. One of the things I nearly forgot guys, this is uh, one of the bottles that I put in and this, as you can see, is not frozen yet and the other ones were. Um, and the reason for that is I put salt in here. So what salt does is lowers the temperature at which the ice will freeze. 
So rather than it freezing at zero degrees and staying there until it's a solid, it might be neg five, depending on how much salt you put in and what you put in. That's an interesting concept because if you put all salt water in your bottles, you will have a colder ice box. But the interesting thing is, is that they'll also start melting uh, sooner. So rather than starting to melt at zero degrees and staying at zero degrees until they're fully melted, they'll start to melt at uh, five degrees or negative five degrees, sorry, and they'll stay at negative five degrees until they're all melted. So they start to melt sooner when the temperature goes up, but they will stay, uh, but they will be colder. So if you want to get a little bit more, uh, your icebox a little bit colder, put uh, I, uh, salt into your water bottles. Obviously you can't drink them after that. Uh, it's not too good, but you will end up with colder, um, a colder icebox. So that's, uh, yeah, just something to uh, think about. I, uh, salt in your uh, icebox or water bottle.